February 17th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Exodus chapters 37 and 38 from the Old Testament. Bezalel made the Ark of Acacia wood. Its length was 3 feet 9 inches, its width 2 feet 3 inches, and its height 2 feet 3 inches. He overlaid it with pure gold inside and out, and he made a surrounding border of gold for it. He cast four gold rings for it that he put on its four feet, with two rings on one side and two rings on the other side. He made poles of acacia wood, overlaid them with gold, and put the poles into the rings on the sides of the ark in order to carry the ark. He made an atonement lid of pure gold. Its length was three feet nine inches and its width was two feet three inches. He made cherubim of gold. He made them of hammered metal on the two ends of the atonement lid one cherub on one end and one cherub on the other end. He made the cherubim from the atonement lid on its two ends. The cherubim were spreading their wings upward, overshadowing the atonement lid with their wings. The cherubim faced each other, looking toward the atonement lid. He made the table of acacia wood. Its length was three feet, its width one foot six inches, and its height two feet three inches. He overlaid it with pure gold, and he made a surrounding border of gold for it. He made a surrounding frame for it about three inches wide, and he made a surrounding border of gold for its frame. He cast four gold rings for it, and attached the rings at the four corners where its four legs were. The rings were close to the frame to provide places for the poles to carry the table. He made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold to carry the table. He made the vessels which were on the table out of pure gold, its plates, its ladles, its pitchers, and its bowls to be used in pouring out offerings. He made the lampstand of pure gold. He made the lampstand of hammered metal. Its base and its shaft, its cups, its buds, and its blossoms were from the same piece. Six branches were extending from its side, three branches of the lampstand from one side of it, and three branches of the lampstand from the other side of it. Three cups shaped like almond flowers with buds and blossoms were on the first branch, and three cups shaped like almond flowers with buds and blossoms were on the next branch, and the same for the six branches that were extending from the lampstand. On the lampstand there were four cups shaped like almond flowers with buds and blossoms, with a bud under the first two branches from it, and a bud under the next two branches from it, and a bud under the third two branches from it, according to the six branches that extended from it. Their buds and their branches were all of one piece. All of it was one hammered piece of pure gold. He made its seven lamps, its trimmers, and its trays of pure gold. He made the lampstand and all its accessories with 75 pounds of pure gold. He made the incense altar of acacia wood, its length was a foot and a half, and its width a foot and a half, a square, and its height was three feet. Its horns were of one piece with it. He overlaid it with pure gold, its top, its four walls, and its horns, and he made a surrounding border of gold for it. He also made two gold rings for it under its border, on its two sides, on opposite sides, as places for poles to carry it with. He made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. He made the sacred anointing oil and the pure fragrant incense, the work of a perfumer. He made the altar for the burnt offering of acacia wood, seven feet six inches long and seven feet six inches wide. It was square, and its height was four feet six inches. He made its horns on its four corners, its horns were part of it, and he overlaid it with bronze. He made all the utensils of the altar, the pots, the shovels, the tossing bowls, the meat hooks, and the fire pans. He made all its utensils of bronze. He made a grating for the altar, a network of bronze under its ledge, halfway up from the bottom. He cast four rings for the four corners of the bronze grating to provide places for the poles. He made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with bronze. He put the poles into the rings on the sides of the altar with which to carry it. He made the altar hollow out of boards. 
He made the large basin of bronze and its pedestal of bronze from the mirrors of the women who served at the entrance of the tent of meeting. He made the courtyard. For the south side, the hangings of the courtyard were of fine twisted linen, 150 feet long, with their 20 posts and their 20 bronze bases, with the hooks of the post and their bands of silver. For the north side, the hangings were 150 feet, with their 20 posts and their 20 bronze bases, with the hooks of the post and their bands of silver. For the west side, there were hangings 75 feet long, with their 10 posts and their 10 bases, with the hooks of the post and their bands of silver. For the east side, toward the sunrise, it was 75 feet wide, with hangings on one side of the gate that were 22 and a half feet long, with their three posts and their three bases. And for the second side of the gate of the courtyard, just like the other, the hangings were 22 and a half feet long, with their three posts and their three bases. All the hangings around the courtyard were of fine twisted linen. The bases for the posts were bronze. The hooks of the posts and their bands were silver. Their tops were overlaid with silver, and all the posts of the courtyard had silver bands. The curtain for the gate of the courtyard was of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and fine twisted linen, the work of an embroiderer. It was 30 feet long, and like the hangings in the courtyard, it was seven and a half feet high, with four posts and their four bronze bases. Their hooks and their bands were silver, and their tops were overlaid with silver. All the tent pegs of the tabernacle and of the courtyard all around were bronze. This is the inventory of the tabernacle, the tabernacle of the testimony, which was counted by the order of Moses, being the work of the Levites, under the direction of Ithamar, son of Aaron, the priest. Now Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, made everything that the Lord had commanded Moses. And with him was Aholiab, son of Ahissamach, of the tribe of Dan, an artisan, a designer, and an embroiderer in blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and fine linen. All the gold that was used for the work in all the work of the sanctuary, namely the gold of the wave offering, was 29 talents and 730 shekels, according to the sanctuary shekel. The silver of those who were numbered of the community was 100 talents and 1,775 shekels, according to the sanctuary shekel. One becca per person, that is a half a shekel, according to the sanctuary shekel, for everyone who crossed over to those numbered, from 20 years old or older, 603,550 in all. The 100 talents of silver were used for casting the bases of the sanctuary and the bases of the special curtain. 100 bases for 100 talents, one talent per base. For the remaining 1,775 shekels, he made hooks for the post, overlaid their tops, and made bands for them. The bronze of the wave offering was 70 talents and 2,400 shekels. With it he made the bases for the door of the tent of meeting, the bronze altar, the bronze grating for it, and all the utensils of the altar. The bases for the courtyard all around, the bases for the gate of the courtyard, all the tent pegs of the tabernacle, and all the tent pegs of the courtyard all around. God, I have seen online and in some of my Bibles pictures of what this magnificent structure and all the pieces inside of it supposedly look like. And it's incredible. <laughs> it is beautiful. And even if we didn't see pictures, I suspect that we would get a really great idea of how amazing this was just from, from these instructions. But I know that so much of the Old Testament points to the coming Christ, points to your son, Jesus, showing up here on earth. And with, with the resurrection of your son, after he died for our sins, we, once you, we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and ask for forgiveness of our sins, the Holy Spirit comes and lives with inside of us, is sealed inside of us. So instead of you dwelling in a tabernacle among your people, you have now, through your son, 
now come to dwell in our hearts. But you still have very specific expectations. <laughs> Maybe not down to the inch, but you have very serious expectations of what you want us to do while we're here on earth. Um, and you couldn't make that more clear in the Bible. One, we are to love. We are with to love with the love that you've given us. We are to love you. We are to love others with that same love. And two, we are to make disciples of all the nations. We are to go out and tell people about you. And that's the two things, the two reasons why we're here on earth, all leading to glorification for you. Just like the tabernacle was glorification for you. So help us remember that just because we don't go into a tabernacle that is sparkly and filled with umpteen pounds of gold and fine linen and embroidered this, that all the spectacle may not be there. But now instead you're living inside of us. And we are the outward appearance, the reflection of who you are in this earth. That everything that we do and everything that we say, people are watching. People are watching very close. It's amazing how many emails I get. So let us remember that we have now become like your tabernacle, that you are now living inside of us, that with respect and awe and reverence and thankfulness, that we go live our day today for your glory, that we love you beyond anything that we can imagine. And because we love you so much, and more importantly, because you love us beyond anything we can imagine, that we will go and love other people. Yeah, not just the easy ones, but the hard ones. And yeah, that means praying for your enemies, praying for the people who aren't very nice to you online, praying for his ex-wife. <laughs> Praying for the friend who talked behind your back. This means loving them unconditionally like you loved us. And today, God, let us remember that you also call us to make disciples of the whole nations. That as this tabernacle with you living inside of us, that we are to go out. That we are to go. That we are to go and tell people about this incredible blessing that we have of you living inside of us your incredible love and forgiveness and grace so even though we're reading stories from the Old Testament that happened thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago there's honestly not a lot of difference if we really look at these stories and your intention for them as long as we can keep our focus on you what it is that you're telling us and relate it to how you want our lives to be. Thank you, God, for these amazing stories and for helping teach us what it truly means to be your children, your people. In your son's name I pray. Amen.